We're now going to talk about aging deer. And with us today is Tom Cooley. He's a wildlife biologist. Tom, welcome to the Big Buck Home. Thank you. Well, today we're going to talk about aging deer. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of science and uh, history that goes along with right. uh, aging deer. We've got some jaw bones. And uh, let's just start right at the beginning uh, of aging. Let's start with the, the youngest deer. What we look for on the, the deer with the, the fawn, the young of the year, we're looking at the cheek teeth, which are the premolars and the molars. And uh, they'll have four, sometimes five, cheek teeth. And uh, again, the animal's gonna be very small, the jaw will be very small, and really very little wear on them because they haven't been around all that long. Right. And this is some of the things that they do at the check station by, you know, slitting right. the jaw, and then they're gonna go in and check the teeth, and yep. that's how they can tell how to age. Yes. Next jaw is a year and a half, and at a year and a half, deer will replace their three premolars, which are milk teeth in this instance. You can see this third premolar has three cusps to it, or three parts, and it's replaced by a tooth that only has two parts to it. From this time on, all these teeth are permanent, and so you're looking at a, uh, from two and a half on, you're going to be looking at the amount of wear, which is the dentine, the brown staining that is seen through the enamel. Well, this is a, a three and a half year old, and you can see you have considerably more enamel that has dentine through it here. And then what happens on this last cusp is a two and a half, it's just a very thin brown line of dentine. At a three and a half, it wraps around partway and kind of forms a shell for a cup. In a four and a half, it wraps all the way around. And then we also look for progressively more wear on this first molar, and the inside crest will wear down. They're nice and sharp uh, on a three and a half. By four and a half, those are starting to round off, and so you don't see that. Then from then on, we just get progressively more and more wear, so that this was a seven and a half, and you can see you have a lot of dentine showing through the, the two here. Much smoother, too, I can right. see that. Yep. And then as they get older, usually about the time they are around 10 and a half, they're down to the gum line. Now these teeth, or these jaws are all clean, so there's no gum on here. But if it were, you would see that you've actually got teeth below the gum line on this animal, which was a 15 and a half year old. This was one that we did take a central incisor on it. And this is the most accurate way to get a, an age, is to take the tooth, cut it, and stain it, and you count the number of rings just like you would a tree, mm -hmm. and that'll give you the exact age. But when we're looking at thousands of deer during the fall, that's not a practical way of, of coming up with those ages. And again, the majority of what we look at are going to be the fawns and the year and a halves on up to the two and a halves, and you get progressively fewer and fewer as those animals get older. And you can imagine this was undoubtedly a doe, right? Because it's going to be a, you're going to be hard pressed to find a buck out there that's <laughs> 15, 15 and a half years if old. If you did, you'd have a big rack. You might be at the top right. of the buck pole. <laughs> yep. Now, does it make a difference um, what part of the state these deer are in, depending upon the wear at all? A little bit down the southern part, they're not going to be under much winter stress, and so down here, you're not going to have many issues with. Uh, abnormal wear as you get further north and you're dealing with sand uh, where life is a little bit rougher chances are their teeth are going to wear a little bit faster because um, they're going to be grinding more so than what they would down here uh, what we look at are primarily those three teeth that premolar third premolar first molar last cusp on the last molar and come up with your best estimate on what the age of that animal would be and for the most part, for management purposes, as long as you can separate out your fawns, your yearlings, your two and a half and older, that will give you most of the information that you need. But we like to be as accurate as we can, and the hunter likes to have as accurate an age as they can get, and so we try to get it down to the age. That's pretty much what we look for. You, you may get some abnormal wear if you get like an old fracture. Uh, if there's a, a break here or a break here, that jaw is not going to be quite right. It's not going to heal back exactly right, so that you're going to get abnormal wear on the teeth. Uh, we've got some things that we see with deer where you, you actually get an infection at the root of the tooth, and the, the teeth may fall out, and the jaw may have some enlargements in it and that type of thing. But all of those are taken into consideration when an estimate's made on the age of it. Thanks for being with us. You bet. All right. Tom Cooley, wildlife biologist, and uh, we're talking about aging deer here on the Big Buck Pole. Stay with us, we got more coming up.